Hi everyone, how are you doing? Today, June 15th, some non-essential shops are reopening in the UK, including some bookshops, which is very exciting. I've missed going to, to bookshops a lot and just the whole experience of browsing and buying books. And, you know, that's my, my big treat thing that I like to give myself is to go buy new books. I mean, I've missed doing this, as I know many of you have. Uh, obviously, I haven't been able to go um, for many weeks and months um, since the pandemic and lockdown happened. Happened. So um, this is very exciting, but it also presents a number of problems because you're not supposed to go on public transport if um, it's not for work or for an essential purpose. And um, and I need to get a bit of public transport to get there. Um, like literally, I only need to take two train stops before I can walk um, to, to get there. Um, so but I am traveling after 10 a.m. because I have the morning off from work. So I thought I'd go on an expedition to um, some of these bookshops. And uh, and see what I what I can see. So um so it, this whole thing might not happen because if I get to the train station and there's a lot of people there, if there's a queue of people there, then I will go back because it would be irresponsible of me to to travel um when I don't absolutely have to and obviously book buying isn't an essential thing um, so and uh, you do have to wear face covering when going on public transport now so I do have a face mask to to wear for that and I'm going to use hand sanitizer and try to touch as few surfaces as possible but then also going to the bookshop I feel you know a slight tug and pull about whether I should go at all as well because obviously um, workers need staff need to be there um, to, to work at the shop and I I'm sure some of them feel very ambivalent about going back to work and yeah the the safety of, of going there so you know partly I, I feel like I because I know before lockdown happened um, some employees of Waterstones were really criticizing how they were being made to still go to work even though it was clear that um, you know, the, the pandemic was happening and a lot of people weren't feeling safe about going to work. There was a lot of voice uh, opinions about this on, on social media. And um, and so, you know, I, I feel really bad that, that workers, um, you know, to keep their jobs feel like they have to go and put themselves in um, what might be in a unsafe conditions. Um, so I really want to, um, if I can, speak to employees of bookshops while I'm there to check if how they're feeling um, about being back at work and if they feel safe there. Um, I think it'll be really interesting to, to find that out because, um, because uh, yeah, I'll, I'll want to make sure that, um, you know, they feel safe um, being there if, if um, I'm, I'm going to go out as, um, you know, an individual to, to buy books. And, uh, and I know a lot of people don't feel safe going and doing non-essential shopping as well because, um, you know, they might still be shielding or they, you know, just might be really concerned concerned about the, the, the health concerns about doing so that, um, you know, we're still not out of this pandemic. And so, you know, and I know it seems like I'm doing a lot of hand wringing, but I think these are questions that we really need to be asking ourselves before doing any of these things. And that there's really, you know, two sides to the issue. I mean, you could just stay at home absolutely as much as possible and continue to do so to the end of the year. Um, and that would you know, probably massively help. But at the same time, you know, the economy is massively suffering. And because I'm in a position to um, in a lucky position to be able to buy books, I want to do that if, if I can. And obviously, I could do that online. But you know, as we all understand, the experience of actually going to a bookshop is quite different from just browsing books online. So, so yeah, I want to try it out. I want to take you on that journey because I think it'll be really interesting. I'd like to see more videos of like this as, you know, as, um, as things change in, um, in each of our countries and um, in, in our regions um, as things open up of um, how people are coping with um, things opening up and, and how we feel safe, the, the actual mechanics of, of how it's working. So I'm interested to see how, what changes will be made in the bookshop to ensure customers and employees' safety. So yeah, so I'm going to head out in London now. And uh, to do that, I'm going to, I'm wearing my Barbara Streisand in London t-shirt, um, which I, I got at a concert, um, was that a year or two ago when I saw her, she performed in Hyde Park. So that was very exciting. Um, but obviously that won't be happening again um, anytime.
anytime soon, any big concerts like that. So uh, I'm going to take off now and I'll report on my journey. Luckily, when I got to the train station, there were only a few other people waiting for the train I was getting. And when I got on the train, there were only two other people in the very large carriage that I was in. So it felt fine taking the journey. And I do miss seeing views of the city when traveling on overground trains because uh, the like cityscapes of London are really beautiful. And when I got to Victoria Station, it was strange seeing it so empty. I mean, this is normally one of the busiest stations in the country. And they had tables here with hand sanitizer and face masks for anyone who wanted them. And the same was true at Green Park Station uh, when I passed by it. I walked to the center of London um, from Victoria Station and I literally passed by Buckingham Palace and it was equally strange seeing how empty it was outside there because even though it's the morning on a Monday, this is a spot normally busy with tourists all throughout the week so it was very odd. Most shops I passed were still closed, although Fortnum & Mason uh, was open so, so that was fun to see and I was delighted to see a Japanese sweet shop that I love was open as well so I went in there and got a couple of uh, sweets as well. I was heading to Waterstones Piccadilly but passed by Hatchard's bookshop first um, which is close by so I went in there um, first off and there were spots to queue outside the shop but I didn't have to actually wait to go inside. I spent around 15 or 20 minutes in the shop itself and saw maybe a dozen customers in that time. Uh, it was great to see all the recent releases and this shop also has a section for signed books or first editions of older books so that's quite a unique thing about this shop. And there were signs throughout to keep your distance and if it were busier this would be a challenge I think in this shop because there are lots of narrow passages between rooms and sections. I mean it's a beautiful shop but um, it's uh, yeah it's quite sort of small enclosed spaces so if it was busier I think it would be a lot more difficult to navigate. And one of the big rule, new rules in bookshops is that if you touch a book, it should go onto a trolley where it will be taken to quarantine for a few days before being reshelved. Uh, but I was a bit confused because there were lots of trolleys around the shop with books waiting to be restocked. And I think the only trolley intended for this quarantine is at the till because it has a sign on it specifically stating it was for that purpose. So I think if they're going to be strict about touching books, I think they need to make it more clear which are to be used for quarantine because otherwise books could go back on the shelves much faster. Uh, but something else that I noticed, I'd never noticed before in this shop when I'd gone in it is they have a picture and sign that Betty Davis had once visited this shop to sign copies of her memoir, uh, which is very cool, of course. Uh, then I went on to Waterstones, which actually had a greeter at the door explaining the direction you were supposed to walk. Um, they had all the same rules about distancing and hand sanitizing, sneeze guards at the till, um, you know, these sort of barriers between you and the, uh, the employee that's um, selling you the book. And again, they also have a um, special trolley where you're supposed to put any books that, that you actually touch. I love that this shop has a special display of Elizabeth McNeil's excellent novel, The Doll Factory. And they also have a special corner for LGBT books and a set of bookshelves for independent publishers. Um, so that's all really cool. And of course, they, there was a big, huge Mentel display um, as well. And all the employees' uh, stocking books I saw were wearing face masks, but the employees behind the counters weren't wearing face masks. And uh, I guess that was because they have these sneeze guards, um, so that wasn't really necessary. And then finally, I ambled over to Foyle's Bookshop, uh, which is probably my favorite of these three shops. It's so light and open and really well laid out. Um, they always have such good staff picks as well. Although I did check out their um, Joyce Carol Oates shelf and they're not stocking her new novel yet. Again, this shop had all the same safety measures in place with reminders to keep your distance and a trolley to put the books on that you touched and that you didn't want to buy. So I did buy four different books 
books um, across the three shops, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but I did talk to uh, four different employees um, across these these four shops. And so it was interesting hearing their opinions and feedbacks about what it was like to, to be back because I, I asked them all how they found the experience of being back and um, and if they felt safe there. And, um, and all four of them said that they did feel safe there and they thought it was good, all of the, the measures that they had put in place. Um, two of them said it was really excellent to be back. They were so happy to be back in, in the bookshops and selling to customers again. Um, two said it was good, but uh, that, that it was quite strange, all of the new circumstances, which makes sense. And, you know, it's going to take all of us um, a lot of getting used to um, these new sort of safety measures of just casually shopping and browsing. Um, one of them did say it was really great just to be able to have actual human interaction with people in real life again, because he had said for many weeks he'd only been talking to his wife in real life. And so to be able to have conversations with people again was really great. And um, also one of them said that they had actually been back for a few days already um, getting used to the new safety measures and the procedures that were going to have to take place um, before customers actually came back into the shop. So it was, um, yeah, it was good to, to hear that um, they were all quite happy to be working there and you know if I talked to them outside of the shop you know maybe the story would be different um obviously I was talking to them in their place of work so you know they were obviously going to be positive to a certain degree about it but um but also it was good to overhear a really um good feedback from a few different customers I overheard talking with employees saying how happy they were to be back in a bookshop and to be browsing for books again and I completely agree it was such a lovely experience to be actually see lots of books on a bookshelf again now I didn't actually touch any books that I didn't buy because I, I have too much respect for books themselves. Like there were a few books I saw, which um, which I saw there was only one copy of on the shelf. And I felt would feel really bad if that got sent to quarantine for a few days just because I had, you know, touched it and looked at the inside flap of it. Um, so the solution I found to get around this was I just looked up the book on my phone to see a description of it um, to find out more about it and if I wanted to, to purchase it, um, which I I think is probably, you know, something that a lot of people could adopt and do rather than this thing of actually touching a book and then having to have it be quarantined. And, and uh, you know, I mean, it's obviously fine to do that if there's like lots of copies of it. But yeah, I feel I would feel a bit bad about sending books into quarantine. And also there is the thing about space again. I mean, like I said, um, in these three shops in particular, Hatchards is just has smaller spaces within the shop where customers can roam about. So if the shop was any busier, that would make it very awkward uh, trying to maneuver and, you know, keep the two meter distance, which um, we're all still supposed to be keeping in the, the UK from each other when we see people on um, the outside world. And, you know, maybe over time, those measures will be loosened because there's a varying scientific data that says that, you know, maybe two meters isn't so much of a, of a distance that you have to have in between people to, to keep you safe. Um, so, you know, if that loosens up, that'll make it much easier and uh, but, you know, with Waterstones Piccadilly Circus and um, with uh, with Foyle's bookshop, those are much larger bookshops. And so if there's if there were a lot more customers in those shops, it would be much easier to, to move about them um, than it would in Hatchards. And I, I think the same will be true for a lot of independent bookshops. It'll be a big challenge for them um, because they don't have, you know, these big wide open spaces between their bookshelves that uh, it's going to be really difficult for customers to navigate and they're going to have to be very strict about how many customers can be in a shop at any one time, which will be, again, much more different difficult for smaller bookshops because they generally have less employees, so can't spare to have somebody at the front of the shop, you know, regulating how many people are in the shop and who can come in next and all of those things. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of challenges. And I, I would say that if it was really busy, like on the weekend. I, I'm sure the shops are going to be much more busy. And I probably wouldn't want to go to them during that time because I think it just will make it so awkward maneuvering around it. I mean, I'm sure we'll all get used to it as we have with supermarkets of having to wait outside for a certain amount of time. But it is different with bookshops because, you know, as book lovers, we like to stand in front of a bookshelf for multiple minutes sometimes looking at all the different titles and um, and if you feel this pressure that you have to like move on quite quickly, it's um yeah it's gonna it's gonna make it less 
fun. Um, but you know, these are necessary things that we have to get used to, I know. And, and, um, and I do want to keep supporting bookshops because, you know, it'd be really sad if a lot of them had to close down because of, um, you know, lack of uh, customers over a period of time, or if they had to remain closed for even longer than they have already. So, you know, it's a big dilemma. And, uh, and I think it's, you know, something we're all going to have to get around and, and get used to. But okay, so get on to the fun stuff now. I, I, I'll talk about the four books that I actually bought and the reasons I, I bought them at these book show, these bookstores. And I don't think I would have bought them if I hadn't gone into these bookshops. So um, so the first one I got at Hatchards, um, which is Graham Swift's new novel. I didn't even know he had a new novel. So it was um, really nice to see this on the shelf. It's called Here We Are. And uh, I, I really loved his um especially his recent fiction that he's published um he's uh yeah his writing's really beautiful and um and this is a special signed copy um so uh so yeah that was fun to to see and and that sort of you know sweetened the pot for me to actually purchase it and you know obviously buying a signed copy is less easy to do online of a new book than um than you know it is going into a shop and and buying a signed copy so yeah i'm looking uh, forward to reading this it's another fairly short novel um then i also at waterstones i bought homie by denez smith this um poetry collection which is one that i've been wanting to buy because i absolutely loved don't call us dead which came out last year a lot of the poems in this are about friendship and uh, about race and uh, about uh, gender and sexuality so um yeah uh, dennis smith is such a brilliant writer and uh, so yeah excited to read this this new collection um i also bought the novel you people by nikita lal Lawani, um, which is a novel I uh, saw Anna James was praising and that she had read fairly recently. Um, so that inspired me to get a copy of this and make me want to, to read this. And then in Foyle's bookshop, I bought The Tega Syndrome by Cristina Rivera Garza, uh, who is a Mexican, Mexican author that I've read before. I read her um, short no, novel um, called The Iliac Crest, which is a sort of experimental novel, really wild writing and really interesting perspective. And I didn't know um, that this great publisher and other stories had um, published another book by her. So, um, so, so yeah, I was very uh, excited to get a copy of this as well. And yeah, and pretty much all of these books, I don't think I would have got around to buying if I hadn't actually gone into the bookshop. So that's a, that's a lovely thing. And I'm looking forward to, to reading them. So, uh, so that was my experience going to UK bookshops again for the first time now that they've finally been reopened, or at least these larger ones have been reopened. I know a lot of the smaller ones probably won't be reopening till the beginning of July or even later. Um, so yeah, just have to sort of keep waiting and see how that goes. But I'd be really interested to know how things are where you live. Um, have bookshops reopened? Um, and if they are, what sort of measures are in place to uh, um, keep people distance from each other? Or are there not any measures at all? And is it just life as normal? Um, yeah, so um, so let me know all of that. Because um, yeah, I'd be really interested to see, like, especially from different countries around the world, how things are going at the moment, and uh, get an update about that. Uh, but if you just want me let me know about some other books that you've bought recently that you're eager to share and, uh, and talk about, um, let me know about that as well. So I'll uh, speak to you again soon. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, take care. Happy reading.